Welcome back to the Gadget Lab. I am Michael Calori. And I'm Nathan Olivares Giles. On this week's show, uh, we're going to take a look at a new phone from HTC. Uh, and then Robbie Baldwin is going to come on and we're going to talk about some inexpensive gadgets to spend your tax refund on. And we're going to look at a new Bluetooth portable speaker. Also, we have the iPad 3 case from last week that we're going to give away for Pen and Quill. And we will be announcing the winners at the end of the show. But first, the HTC One S. So this is a brand new smartphone from HTC, available exclusively on T-Mobile, and they're billing it as the flagship phone for T-Mobile. Not the flagship phone for HTC, but for T-Mobile. For T-Mobile. So yeah. it, it runs ICS, it's the only ice cream sandwich phone on uh, T-Mobile, is that right? Right now, it is the only ice cream sandwich phone on T-Mobile, um, but, uh, HTC has basically rebooted their entire smartphone lineup and they're putting out a series of phones called the One Series. The actual top dog of the One Series is going to AT&T. It's called the One X. This is the One S. So what's the differences between the X and the S? Well, actually on the inside for the US versions, they're about the same. They're both running a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, have about the same um, specs. Actually, it's the same eight megapixel camera, a really good camera, really good camera software and they're both running Ice Cream Sandwich with this Sense 4 user interface, which is the first version of Sense that I just honestly did not hate, genuinely. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I've always liked Sense. Of all the wrappers that all the different you? manufacturers put on their phones, I think Sense is the most palatable. Yeah, this one's uh, not bad. It's actually kind of nice because it's not very much in the way. It's very 2D feeling. Mm. The big clock is still there, but it doesn't really feel like it's slowing down Android like a lot of past versions of Sense and other you know, skins over Android felt like. Mm -hmm. um, but for every aspect of this phone, the One S that I liked, I found something I didn't like. So mm -hmm. Sense is great, the operating system is not bad, um, but the screen is what's called a QHD screen and honestly the resolution is low if you're gonna build this to me as a flagship phone this year. Mm -hmm. It would've been great last year, but we're on a 720p at least now and that just doesn't keep up. Um, it has a really nice, super thin and light, you know, body here. Nice aluminum materials, kind of interesting gradient, but the camera sticks out, and I feel like it would get scratched really easily. Yeah, probably. And yeah, there's still like little gaps between different parts of the body here, which is kind of something that you see on HTC phones a lot. Um, so I feel like for everything that I liked about it, there was also something I didn't like and just didn't live up to that flagship standard that I mm. wanted it to. Yeah, because a flagship phone really has to compete with the likes of uh, an iPhone or a Galaxy Nexus from Samsung. Yeah. Something with a really nice sharp screen and super fast, good performance. Yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna ask me for 200 bucks and I'm gonna have to live with this for the next two years of my life, I want it to be something I'm gonna love using every single day. And when your screen is subpar, that's the first thing that, this is what you're gonna be looking at and touching every single day, yeah. so. And screen technology not only is already better than what's in this phone, but is going to continue to improve over the next two years, so. Exactly. It's a good place to, if you wanna future-proof your device, you choose a screen that's better than. No doubt, no doubt. And so, in, in our review, uh, we gave it a six and just didn't really live up to what yeah. we wanted it to. Which technically is still a recommendation. So if you're yeah. if you are a T-Mobile diehard customer and you're looking for a new phone, I mean, you could definitely spend your two hundred dollars on something worse. Yeah, for for, <laughs> for T-Mobile, this is probably the best phone on T-Mobile right now, other than maybe the Samsung Galaxy S two. Mm. Um, but if you have the option of looking at different phones, I would definitely check out the Galaxy Nexus. Um, you know, maybe some stuff from Motorola over at Verizon. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different options out there. And the One X, which is coming to AT&T and has a much better screen. All right, so that's the latest with the HTC phones. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. And uh, let's bring out Robbie so we can talk about how cheap you are. <laughs> All right, Robbie's here. Hi. Robbie, you're a cheap bastard. I am a cheap bastard, and during tax time, I become even more of a cheap bastard because I might end up paying taxes. And if you ended up paying taxes, you're probably not going to run out and buy a brand new, you know, $800 iPad. Instead, you're going to get something cheap. And what I did is I found some cheap gadgets that people can get right now. So I found this watch. It's like $4 on Amazon.com, and it's actually pretty cool. Like, it's, it's shiny. Oh, so you can see yourself, so you don't have to buy a mirror. And you push this button and it lights up, like old school LED. That's pretty sweet. 
Yeah. That's a $4 watch. $4 watch. I also find found a $10 MP3 player that looks suspiciously like an iPod shuffle. Yes. What's it called? The Eclipse? It's the Eclipse MP3 player. It's oh, and it clips onto you. And it clips. It's, it's oh, the Eclipse. Get it? Yeah. Get it? I see so. what you did there. <laughs> so this was $10 for two gigabytes. Um, there's a little bit of noise in the sound, but... Ten bucks. Ten bucks is ten bucks, eh? And then I also got the, a burner phone. So if you watch The Wire, you know burner phones. You just, sure. It's a pay-as-you-go phone. This was uh, twenty bucks, and you can top sure. this off. Stringer Bell. It's, yeah, Stringer Marlo Bell. Stanfield. It's, it's not. You know, it's it. It doesn't. It has mobile web, but don't bother. Does it have a camera so you can take pictures of? It clocks? does not have a camera, but it says you can send pictures. Oh, okay. So you just okay. I guess you can download pictures and send those, sure. or somebody <laughs> sends you a picture and then you turn around and send that to somebody else, and then. The worst thing I found was this digital camera that's a keychain that has Spider-Man on it. And you would think Spider-Man wouldn't allow his good name to be put on such a horrible product, but it was. Um, so what's, what's shitty about it? Well, first of all, the viewfinder is worthless. Like if I put it up here, everything is just blurry. Uh, it's uh, just like a little plastic lens. It would only take 20 Ooh. pictures. And um, it only works with Windows... Uh, XP and 2000. I couldn't get it to work on Windows 7. Really? Yeah. What so, about Vista? No, no, nothing. <laughs> so it's, Did you uh, try Linux? <laughs> no, I tried the Mac. I tried everything. I couldn't even get to, to show up. So. Wow. So how much was that? This was $10. Oh, God. But I, I suspect all the money probably went to licensing the, uh, the Superman. Yeah, the Spider-Man. Yeah. Sorry, the, the Spider-Man uh, likeness on the front. And they didn't do a very good job because they cut into his face, which is something you don't want to do when you're trying to... Yeah, they don't care. They got their nine dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, they got my money from me. So, uh, so in addition to the cheap gadgets, you also did a uh, a gallery of gadgets for people who have so much money that they can afford accountants to not have to pay any taxes, right? Yes, so yes. For the, for the ultra rich. So we had a really awesome uh, a guitar. It's made of titanium. Um, we had a toilet, which is my favorite product on the uh, list. Uh, new, uh, the Kohler Numi. It's six thousand dollars. And it warms your bum, <laughs> and it has forced air that warms your feet. Yeah, and so when you it blows walk, air out from yeah, the Yeah, it keeps your, your feet warm in the morning. That's pretty awesome. Um, when you walk up to the toilet, it automatically opens and lights, and it has speakers in it. So, you so can it play. talks to you and agrees to you? No, you can play music. It'll play, it, has like, it has music that's already pre-installed on the toilet, but you can also plug <laughs> like your iPhone or your iPod. Wagner. Yeah. Flight of the Valkyries. Yeah, dun, or it was a ride of the Valkyries. Dun, dun, I know I'm going to get dun, dun, comments about that. But yeah, dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I just play that all the time. <laughs> What's going well, on in there? You don't want to know. <laughs> so send me your $6,000. Does it tweet? It doesn't tweet, but no. it does have a, a touch screen um, no. interface, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> a touch screen interface. In they the figure, you know, you're bringing your phone into the bathroom with Filthy. you anyway. Filthy, filthy, filthy. Definitely well, you can you can look at and read both of Robbie's galleries, both for the cheap gadgets and the ridiculously expensive gadgets on the Gadget Lab. Yep. Uh, last week on the podcast, we gave away uh, or gave the opportunity to give away give away two cases from um, this company, Pad and Quill. They are a mom and pop organization in the Midwest. They make these handsome leather and wood cases for the iPad 3. And we had a trivia question. It was, what is the Arthur C. Clarke novel that shares its name with the Pink Floyd song? Or in other words, the Arthur C. Clarke novel, Childhood's End, which Pink Floyd used as a song title on uh, the album Obscured by Clouds, written by Dave Gilmore. The winners are Michael Smith, otherwise known as Biker Mike on Twitter, and Joshua Gotcher. Hope I'm pronouncing those correctly. We will get in touch with you two lucky winners and we will send you your iPad cases shortly. And if we don't, there's nothing you can do about it, so don't complain. Uh, the last thing we have is this speaker from Sound Freak. Look at this. That's a, you know, when I, before, when I was buying cheap tools, <laughs> don't buy cheap tools, by the way. I made sure not to put cheap tools on the list because cheap tools break mm -hmm. and I've bloodied all of these knuckles with cheap tools. But I would buy cheap tools and sometimes I would come in cases like this. Come in cases, well, this, this, is, this is not a cheap tool. However, it is extraordinarily inexpensive for the product category. Uh, this is a Bluetooth wireless speaker. So the idea is you charge it up and then you take it out with you. It has a battery inside that lasts for eight hours, uh, supposedly. Uh, I tested it, I got about six and a half, seven hours out of it. But uh, it's a speaker that 
has a couple of drivers in it, a couple of speakers in, in the front, so it's stereo and they're nice and wide, so you get a good stereo image. The back pops out and it leans and it kicks back like that oh. and projects sound into the room. Uh, it's kind of a nice design. It's, it's bigger than the leader of the category, which is the jam box, which is a little bit uh, around half as small as this. But the jam box is 200 bucks and it's loud, but it's not quite loud enough. Mm -hmm. This, the Sound Freak, Sound Kick, which I can't believe I just forgot to mention up until right now. But anyway, the Sound Freak Sound Kick is only $100. So it's half the price of a jam box. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's Bluetooth, just like the, uh, the jam box is. So it works with your iPhone, your iPad, your computer. Uh, and and it's, um, it's got around the same battery life. And uh, it sounds better. It's louder, it's clearer in the highs and the lows. So it's, it's a really uh, nice buy for 100 bucks. Do you test it with listening to Rush? Uh, no, I, I just put it on shuffle, just so I had a okay. solid mix of everything. Uh, some Wagner, some Beethoven, you know, the big ones. Um, a lot of Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, but the, so there's a little bit of context around this category too, because we know there's a rumor, or a couple of rumors floating around that uh, the Jawbone people who make the Jambox are going to be releasing a new version of it, probably something bigger, uh, around the same size as the Sound Kick, that uh, is going to cost about three times the money as the Sound Kick. So, oh. um, if I would recommend that you go out and get one of these right now if you need a good wireless speaker, because it's really great as a wireless speaker. I, I've been I've been more than impressed with it for the week or so I've spent with it. Uh, but if you love your jam box, you may want to wait and see what Jawbone is going to be coming out with. We expect uh, within the next few months to hear hear something from them. So um, for now, there's no real news on on the on the better jam box. So the category remains a race between the $200 device and the $100 device. It's cheaper. Uh, and I should mention, it folds up, slips into a backpack, or uh, you can stack it on top of your beautiful leather iPad 3 case and take it with you to the park. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all we have for this week. Uh, we'll come back next week. We'll probably have some more phones, some more tablets, some more speakers, some more cheapness from Robbie. Until then, uh, you can check out uh, all of our latest reviews at wired.com slash reviews, and you can visit the Gadget Lab section at wired.com slash gadget lab. <laughs>